Good afternoon, everyone. Dragonman44 here. Yesterday evening, I was kind of uh, replying back and forth or commenting back and forth with uh, with a gentleman uh, named Dave. I think his his uh, channel is RCAF Polar Express. Uh, he's he's actually a good buddy of Joe Lesage. Um, uh, well, he's the guy that helped him put the uh, chains on the Boland's tractor the other night. We got into a discussion concerning uh, ventilation, ventilation inside the uh, uh, a shop in particular, uh, like a welding shop if you're going to do a lot of welding, or uh, or uh, possibly even in a in a, a spray booth, not necessarily a booth, but a shop where you do a lot of a spray painting of lacquers and enamels and and all that kind of stuff. You know, there's all kinds of deadly chemicals that, uh, inside the you know that stuff, uh, just not good for you at all. Uh, but anyway, we were talking about uh, different things. I kind of told him about how I'd put a condenser fan motor off of a four-ton central air conditioner into a uh, uh, the corner of a buddy's <laughs> workshop because he did a lot of that uh, spray painting of lacquers and paints and and enamels and all that stuff, you know, on his woodwork. And uh, so he asked me if I would possibly get a picture of it. So I went up and took a little picture, and that, that's what you're going to see here in a minute. Um, but at any rate, uh, somewhere in the video I talk about how a paddle fan, and by paddle fan I mean a bladed fan, uh, it's not really capable you know, on these air conditioners, these condenser fans, not really capable of developing a lot of static or duct static. If you were to take a pipe the same size as your outlet of your fan and put 10 feet of pipe on it, it would be so detrimental that it would be unbelievable because it just is incapable of, of moving air under, uh, under built up duct static, which is why you always have squirrel cage fans in your, in your duct work or in your furnace or whatever. To, uh, to develop that duct static to get the air through your, your duct network and out of your registers. Uh, you never see a paddle fan. It very seldom will you ever see a paddle fan. Uh, well, you won't see one residentially uh, or even like commercially, you know, in that application. But at any rate, I hope the little video uh, clarifies what it is that uh, what, what Dave and I was talking about last night. Uh, just kind of a fun little few minute video. Um, just to kind of uh, show him what we did in the corner. Yeah, I don't know if you have air conditioning companies to a great extent in Canada. Uh, you guys are known for your cold weather up there, you know. Um, we, we got her good down here, you know, around the St. Louis area. We get uh, our design temperatures 95 degrees, and uh, we get, when we get that 98% humidity at, at 95 or 100 to 103 degrees, buddy, now let me tell you something, you got some heat. And uh, it's kind of like working in a, <laughs> in a sauna, you know, but eh, what the heck, you know, it's what you get used to. It ain't no big deal. Uh, all my gripe and complaint ain't gonna change it anyway. But anyway, uh, Take a look and um, kind of consider if y'all have that environment um, in your shop, welding or whatever. You know, just just think about getting uh, some kind of an exhaust fan. You can get a, an old restaurant uh, green heck or a mushroom, the old silver aluminum uh, mushroom exhaust fans. Those move a great amount of air. It's a different type of blade. It's not a squirrel cage. Uh, I can't remember what they call it. It's not a tube axial. I can't remember what they call that kind of a... A blade, but it, it's it's capable of moving a tremendous amount of air, uh, also, but uh, not a paddle fan. So uh, at any rate, I, I can't think of anything else in particular. I mean, the subject is broad and 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 immense. So I'm not going to cover it in a 10 minute video, you know, by any stretch of imagination. Not that I know that much about it anyway, you know. Uh, oh, one point that I that I was making in that video is is if you're if you got a a, a larger area where you're welding. Uh, and you've got that fan on, you really don't want to open the other side of your, your doors really, really wide open. And it's not going to feel like it's moving very much air across you. So if you can align yourself between your rear doors or windows and, and just barely crack those doors uh, while you're welding, you will feel an increased air velocity come across you and right out the, uh, right out the exhaust fan. Expanding, expanding just a little bit more about, uh, about fans or blowers in general, um, Fans and blowers are typically rated in uh, in CFM, which stands for cubic feet of air per minute. And when you're talking about air conditioning, you always hear people talk about tons, you know, tons of air conditioning. A ton is 12,000 BTUs, uh, and for every ton of air conditioning in this area, uh, they usually um, size the blowers for 400 cubic feet of air per minute per ton. So a um, a four ton um, four ton central air conditioner uh, is going to de deliver. Uh, 1600 cubic feet of air per minute into your ductwork. There, we're building on a point here. Cubic feet of air is figured by if you take the length and the width of your shop and the average height and then multiply all those together, length time, width time, height, that gives you your cubic foot of space to be conditioned or to have an air change 
uh, in the event of exhaust fan uh, inside your, your shop. So say you've got a 1600 CFM condenser fan, which is what a four ton is approximately going to be. Reasoning being, if it takes 600 CFM across your, your A coil in the furnace to extract 48,000, four times 12,000, 48,000 BTUs of, of heat from that airflow, it should take roughly the same cub cubic feet of air per minute on the outside of the house to reject that heat from that refrigerant to the surrounding air. I referred to 600 CFM. I meant to say 1600 CFM. So I don't think it's a direct correlation, but you can pretty much figure that a four ton condenser fan is gonna be moving a heck of a lot of air. So what you need to do is figure the cubic feet, or at least consider doing this, figure the total cubic footage in your shop. And if you can determine what the CFM rating is of the blower that you, you get to install in your shop, uh, you can see how many minutes it's going to take to totally air change the, the, the amount of air within your entire space. Based on that, say 1600 CFM on a, on a blower, and say your shop is 20,000 cubic feet inside, divide your 20,000 by 1600, that's how many minutes that fan's gonna have to run to give you one changeover of air inside that space. It gets a little confusing, and I kind of went around in a circle, you know, kind of uh, tried to get a halfway decent description, and if I thought about it just a little bit, I could probably bring it uh, to the service a little bit better, but uh, that kind of gives you something to think about anyway. Probably not totally accurate, but I, dang it, it's pretty So good. here you go, Dave. Here's this, um, here's a set of barn doors I was telling you about. Uh, this is in the corner of the shop. Um, very simple, obviously. Just unlatch it, which I've already done. And of course, you'll swing open. You can see the uh, four-ton condenser, uh, condenser fan inside there. Which does a fairly good job as far as um, extracting, you know, your air. And we just have a double pole switch down on the wall, just like a regular light switch, except for it's a double pole. And right now it's sucking all the heat out of here, so I'm going to turn it off real quick. But you got the idea. So tell old Joe he needs to give some serious consideration to raiding the local uh, junkyard, see if he can find a condenser fan motor. The cool thing about this, Dave, is um, from this angle here, it looks just like the, the top of any residential uh, central air conditioner. Uh, the physical size is fairly large. I don't have my measuring stick on me, but uh, it's probably a 30, at least a 30 inch diameter blade. Four ton condenser uh, requires a lot of airflow. And as everyone knows, a paddle fan uh, does not uh, does not generate a, a lot of duct static. It starts kind of slipping in the airstream, so to speak. But at any rate, this does a fine job. And uh, what, what actually does a better job is instead of leaving the other end of the shed doors completely wide open, you just kind of crack the doors, which will increase the air velocity through that crack and across the space in which you're working and uh, draw the fumes away from you much quicker than if you had the opposing uh, end of the shed wide open. And, uh, hopefully Dave got a little enjoyment out of this, maybe grinned a time or two, I don't know. But uh, he and I both know the reason why I made this little video and why I'm talking about air changes in your, uh, in your welding slash paint shop. Uh, so I'll leave it up to Dave to, to pick up where I left off and, and run with it. So anyway, Dave, see you later, mon ami. I guess that's French for my friend. Uh, I think I verified that this morning with <laughs> Grampy's workshop. So anyway, this is Tractor Man 44, and I am out of here.